I can't let it go. I've never dealt in, in the history of me preaching this much with Luke chapter 15. Amen. Amen. But I can't let it go. God is speaking so heavily in this. But we're going to jump up. We're going to go um, to back towards the beginning of the chapter. We're going to start in verse 4. 15 and 4. 15 and 4. Luke 15 and 4. Oh, my God. My God. Have oh, your way, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for your word. Your Thank word you, is Lord. always blessed. Thank you. God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Spirit already testifies. Thank you, Jesus. To not what you're going to do, but what you're already yes. doing. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> this day has already been written. We're Thank just playing you, catch Jesus. up, God. We Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus says, what man of you having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, do if not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. Need you to understand we talk about this a lot, but we're going to go ahead and really deal with it and really talk about it today. Yes, that God wants you whole. Amen. Mm -hmm. He does not want 99% of you. Yes, sir. In this season, in this place that God is taking you, the place that God is taking us, almost whole ain't good enough. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Almost where Ooh, I have purposed you to be is no longer good enough. Yes, sir. I'm proving in my word. Watch this. I'm proving in my word, and I've said this before, and just in case you haven't heard it, we're going to break it down like this. I don't want us to look at it from the means of 100 sheep. But 100 is the percentage, percentage of wholeness. Yes, it is the percentage of completion. Yes, it is the percentage of that word that we shift away from that's called perfection. Yes, that when God is ultimately saying, be ye perfect, mm -hmm. that what he is talking about is I need you whole. My, my God. I need you complete. I, I don't need you walking around broken. I know you're anointed, but you have become complacent yes, with being broken. You have become complacent with not being enough. Yes, sir. Ooh. Yes, sir. Because anytime you walk in a place when you're not walking in wholeness, you have become complacent with not being enough. Because you have become complacent with not being the full measure of who God has called you to be. The full portion of who God has created you to be. So when we look at this 100 sheep, I don't want you to look at it as 100 sheep. I want you to look at it as 100%. And he said, what man having 100% and losing just 1% of that won't leave the 99% in the wilderness. Won't leave the 99% in the desert and go after the one. The Lord was trying to tell us something in this text. He says, I see where you are. I see how you've been pressing. I see how you've been fighting. But I want you to know that I'm concerned with the broken parts of you. No, because you have to You have to understand what the 1% represents, right? The 99% percent is the side of you, the pieces of you, the parts of you that got it all together. Mm. The, 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 the avenues of who you are that nobody has to be concerned about. See, 99% of the time you ain't got to worry about William. 99% of the time you don't have to be concerned with where I am mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. But if that there is a there is a one percent side of me that you need yeah, that man. needs to give you pause, that needs to be concerned about. There is a percent of me that if I'm not covered under the blood, I'll tear everything up in here apart. There is a part of me. 
read that when I would do good, my evil God, is always God. present with me. That is the difference between the 99 and the 1%. It is the part of me that when I would do good, it is the evil that is always present with me. But God is teaching in this text where he says, I'm concerned with the broken parts of you. And I will leave the healed version of you in the wilderness while I go after what is broken. A lot of us are in the season where we're recognizing that I'm in a wilderness in my life. A wilderness is comparison to the desert or the dry place in a dry season. I want to testify to you that you are not really in the dry place. It's just a momentary stopover. It is a momentary layover in between where God, where you have come from and where God is taking you to. And I'm not worried about the healed parts of you, but we get overwhelmed because we say, God, I thought I already dealt with this. I thought I was yeah. greater than this. I thought I was beyond this. I thought I was past this. But I need to leave you here in this pit stop. Not because anything is going wrong, but it's because where I'm taking you, I cannot use this 99% of you. I need a, not a healed version of you, but a whole version of you. So I will leave you in this wilderness after as I go after the broken sections of your life. After as I go after the parts of you that are distressed, the parts of you that are distraught, the pieces of you that everybody is forgotten about. Because watch this, most people will just leave out the, the one. And keep moving with the 99. God says the one, the one represents the section of you that others has forgotten about. The parts or the pieces of you that others were not concerned about. Watch this. You might not even have been concerned about this area in your life. But what happens is that one part of you, that one piece of you, that one section of your life begins to overtake and overrun everything. I hear you, Holy Ghost, in the conversation with Jesus. Hallelujah. The man said, I believe, I believe, but bless thou my unbelief because there is a part of me that don't trust you. There is a part of me that's not loyal. There is a part Jesus. of me that don't believe in you. There my is God. a part of me that don't have faith. And even if it's for a moment, I don't got a moment, Brandy, in this season to be dealing with unbelief. I don't got a minute yes. in this season yes. to be dealing with the lack of faith. I'm yes. walking on track his territory. I'm behind enemy lines. And if the enemy can get me discouraged or distressed just for a moment, it will cost me my life. So God said, I'll leave you in the wilderness right now while I go get the broken part of you that I refuse to let go. I refuse to leave it behind. I refuse to forget about it. I refuse to let it go. Oh my God, do you understand the level of anointing that is in that 1% of you? That is in the broken part of who you are. I know it's broken. Watch this and you'll rather, I hear you Holy Ghost, you'll rather forget about that time in your life. You'll rather forget about the moments in your life. The bad, because in that part of your life is all the mistrust and the mishandlings. The missteps that you've gone through, the mistakes that you've made, the times where you would rather wipe it out of your memory. God said, no, no, no. I need to leave you in the wilderness because we got to go after that because you don't know the power that is in that memory that you're trying to leave. You don't recognize the anointing. You don't recognize before we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. You don't, you don't understand that even though you were broken, you love me. And so it's all going to work work together for yeah. good. So I need to leave you here in this season. Yeah. God is saying, I have not abandoned you. I'm just trying to put you back together again. There was a part of you oh, that I'm yeah. missing. And I wanted to take you into oh, destiny. Yeah. I wanted to take you into a purpose. But there was a piece of you that's missing oh, that I got to have for this next Jesus. season. I have left you. I haven't left you. I just love you. <laughs> oh, I hear you, Holy Ghost. I haven't left you. I just love you. I love you enough to leave you. I love you enough not to allow you to continue on like this. I love you enough to, to allow you to go into this next season. Not being the whole version of who you are. 
Because if I allow you to go into this season without being whole, you will fumble the relationship. If I allow you to go into this next season, I hear you, Holy Ghost, not being whole, you will lose the house. You will lose the blessing. You will lose the ministry. You will lose the people. You will lose the career. You will lose the finances. So I got to allow you to lay over. I haven't left you. It's just a layover. It's just a layover in this season while I go and get the part of you that has been broken. <laughs> the part of you that's messed up. The part of you that people say, well, how can you be anointed and still think like? I need that part of you. Watch this. Watch this. And when he goes and he goes after that, watch this. And it says, and go after that which is lost until he finds. God says, I'm going to keep looking until I find that version of you. Because it takes, but God, that's only a little bit of me. That's only a little part of my story, but that part of the story makes you complete. That part of your story shifts you from healed to whole. That part of your story. Uh -huh, finishes the work. Because when I said it's finished, it ain't finished until I find it. It ain't finished until I find it, until I find it. It ain't finished. I'm going to keep looking. And God, why am I in this wilderness? Why am I going through this desert season? Because I ain't found it yet. Why am I dealing with this over and over year after year? Because I ain't found what you, I hear you, Kurt, what you're looking for. I'm the one you're looking for. God says you can't come out of it until I find find the pieces in you. Watch this. Sometimes it ends up lost because you have hidden it somewhere for nobody else to find it. So my God is searching you, looking for the God, parts of you God, that you don't God, want nobody God, else to God. see, that you want to keep Jesus. hidden from everybody else, that you you say you can have this, but you can't have access to this. God says, I, I want it because when you hit it, from everybody else, you hid it from me too. And so I want to find it. I need it. I got to have it. He become like Pookie looking for that hit. It just won't let me go. There is a part of you that's crying out to me. Even when Cain killed Abel, his blood calls from the crowd. And your purpose is calling from the pieces that you buried. That you buried. God says, I got to have it. Now I keep looking for it. Until I find it today is the day I've got to find. I've got to find it. Oh, the enemy. Woo. Woo. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I hear the Holy Ghost. I hear the Holy Ghost. I hear you, God. I need to help you. You see heartbreak. But God sees wholeness. Watch this, I hear you, Holy Ghost. God says deliverance is in that part of you. The enemy just covered it up with heartbreak. <laughs> Y'all didn't catch that one. Maybe you hear it like this. That is where your purpose is. The enemy just disguised it as pain. Because he wanted you to leave it alone. So he covered it up and he masked it as pain. So you wouldn't want it, but God said it's really purpose. But the enemy made you see that it's pain. It was wholeness, but the enemy made you see it as hurt. I need somebody to catch on to what God is saying. So the enemy made you see it as something that it really was not. So you wouldn't want it, but God says, I see its original intent. I see my purpose. I, I see my word concerning your life. Watch this. I hear you, Holy Ghost, and the Bible says, my word will not come back unto me void. God says that if you're not whole, it voids out my word because he said heaven and earth will pass away before one tittle of my word does not come to pass. So if, it, and if you don't know what a tittle is, a tittle is the dot of an eye or a crossing of a T. The eye can be there without a dot. God said I shut this whole thing down before I let the word that I have spoken in your life not come to pass. So he says yes you got the eye but you're missing the dot. Yes you got the T but you're missing the cross. And so my word cannot come back to me void. So you cannot come back to me until you're completed. 
until you are whole, until you are fully made what I have created and purposed you to be. So if I got to leave you in the wilderness right now, if I got to leave you in a dry desert place right now, I'll do it until I find what I'm looking for from you. I need it in this season. I got to find it. You have not been less left. He's just still looking. My God, my God, my God. Where have you hidden those hurt places in your life? The things that you try to mask up with toughness. I ain't going to never let them get to me again. I ain't going to never let nobody hurt me like that ever again. I ain't going to let you ever do me like that ever again. Every time you see it, every time you say that, you put a container around what God has created. You put a container around his creation and you don't allow him access. Because I need you, but I need you free. I need you, but I need you free. And until you're whole, you're never really free. I'm going to say that again. Until you're whole, you're never actually free. And I need you, but I need you free in this season. I don't need you bound. I don't need you in bondage. Because that thing, even though you buried it, it's got a hold over your life. When you're dealing with unforgiveness, it has a hold over, yes, you cut the person out of your life, but you still haven't forgiven them. And the reason why you cut them off is because it was easier for you to cut them off than it was for you to forgive them. But it until you forgive them, they still got a hold on you. So you ain't dealing with it, but you haven't dealt with it. Huh? I'm going to say that again over on this side. You are no longer dealing with it, but you still haven't dealt with it. And until you dealt with it, you ain't going to be delivered from it. God says, I need to bury it up. I, I need to dig it up. I need to unbury it. I need to find where you hid it at. I need to find where it really is. He came. That's why when Jesus showed up to the town of Bethany looking for Lazarus, he says, where have you buried him? I need to know where have you buried? Where have you buried him? Where have you buried her? What do you mean, Apostle? Where have you buried the version of you that I purposed before the foundation of the world? Where have you buried the version of you that when I thought the thoughts that I thought concerning you, that's what I had in my mind that you buried it underneath the sea of broken relationships and bitter and broken promises and letdowns and, and left outs and rejection and unforgiveness and bitterness. You left it somewhere. Where have you buried the version of you that before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. But where have you buried it? I can't find it. Nowhere. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I need you whole. He says, and when he found it, yes, sir. when he has found it, yes, he lays upon his shoulders, My God. rejoicing. <laughs> that's when we, and you know I ain't no dancer, but that's when we should be praising. That's it. When God has found that's the broken pieces. Woo! Jesus. <laughs> God is a God of broken pieces Jesus. because we talk all the time about how he fed the 5,000 with the, with the five loaves and the two pieces of bread. Yes, but very rarely do we deal with the fragmented pieces that he assigned the disciples over. And he said, pick up the fragments uh, and bless the houses. Uh, I need the broken pieces. Uh, I don't just need the whole pieces of fish. But I need the broken pieces. I, I need the parts of you that people will walk over. Oh, my God, because the broken version of me is the section of my life that people have walked over, that people have discarded, that people didn't want. Hallelujah. They wanted the anointing, but they didn't want William. But God is saying, I have assigned somebody to the broken parts of who you are. Lord, I'm outside because I'm a God of the brokenness. Oh, my God. Now I understand why David says, 
that the sacrifices of the Lord of a, or a broken heart. Uh, because I want what's broken. I want what's discouraged. I want what's distraught. Because, oh, I can do something with that. That's why he gave the vision and the prophecy to Jeremiah. And he said that when the potter has the clay in his hand, it says when you read the text, Nikki, it said that he broke it. Why it was in his hand. It became marred in his hand. It's marred, but it never left his hand. It's broken, but it never left his hand. And it said, and it seemed to please him to make it into something else all over again. Because he says, I deal with brokenness. My God. Bring me your broken pieces. Bring me your broken. Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Because uh, my burden is easy. I, 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 I got an exchange for you. I got an offer for you that you can't come to. So come on to me, all of you that have been rejected, that are the black sheep of your family, that nobody loves you, that nobody likes you, all you that have been divorced, all you that have been forgotten about, all you that have been fired and terminated and evicted. Bring, come up to me, all you that are heavy and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Oh, my God. I hear the Holy Ghost. I heard this in the spirit. Oh, God says, I'm not just saying that I will give you rest, but I'm going to give you the rest. Because you only got a part of the story. But I want to give you the rest. I know you're heavy lady, but I want to give you the rest. They only told you a part of who you are, but I want to give you the rest. They told you you are anointed, but I want to give you the rest. I want to give you the rest of your purpose, your destiny, of who I have called and created you to be. I know this is a portion of who you are, but come unto me and I'll give you the rest, but you got to come to me. Yes, you got to come to me. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, My God. And when he come home, he called together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, mm -hmm. for I have found the one percent of me which was lost. My God. I found the part of me My which God. was stolen. Sometimes we lost that part of us when we were five. Mm -hmm. I know I've had to do transformational work with myself. It's dirty as messy work. But I learned. I learned, man, that I lost a piece of me when I was three. Three. I lost pieces of me when I was five. You hear me here? When I was, when I was ten, I lost pieces of me that had a version of me that I didn't know how to walk in because I lost it. I lost it through violation. I lost it through pain. I lost it through rejection. Mm -hmm. I lost it through hurt. Mm -hmm. I still remember, can remember, I'm, I, can, I can think about it without crying now, but I can still remember driving away with my mother in a U-Haul truck, leaving, leaving my father. Mm -hmm. And even though there was a part of me that needed that, it was a piece of me that I left behind. Mm -hmm. That in order for God to really take me into the place where he was taking me to, I need to revisit that place, mm -hmm. and I needed to get that. Mm -hmm. Because even though I didn't need to be there, right. Come I didn't on. need to leave anything behind. That's right. My God. That's why oh, when God tells you to get rid of people in your life mm -hmm. and move people out, you don't let them leave nothing behind. Mm -hmm. Because it gives them an excuse to come that's back. Mm -hmm. And that's why when you leave something, the enemy always wants you to leave something behind. You ain't got to worry about it right now. Because the enemy wants to give you a reason to revisit where God has told you to come out of. My this God. is why I hear you, Holy Ghost. Yeah. When he called them out of Egypt, he told them everything that they needed to take with them when they went. Because I don't need you to have any excuse to ever revisit this place that's and this that's situation. That's so it. yes, God was he pulling you out. My yes, you left, the, you left the man, but you left him your heart. Mm. Yes, you left that job, My but God. you left My your mind. And so he brought you out, but you left something behind mm. that you needed for the next level in your life. And that is why you cannot operate mm. the way that God has fully created you to because you left fragments of you behind God. that God needed to deliver you. Not only you, but somebody else I needed 
Even though you are saying, I don't need that part of me, but somebody else needs it. Amen. 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 Somebody else Come requires it. Yeah. It, uh, it. It's no longer serving me, but it'll serve somebody else. Because the scripture says that they overcame by the word of their testimony. Yeah. Yeah. The way I read the scripture is they overcame by the word of their testimony. Yeah. So even though you don't need the story, they do. Even My though God. you don't need the hurt anymore, they do. Yeah. And so sometimes yes, you got to because it was something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I hear you. Underneath the surface yes, God. that you didn't see that God saw. Mm, mm, mm. He said, so come unto me, all ye that are heavy, mm -hmm. and I will give you the rest. the rest. I got something that I need you to see. <sighs> <sighs> Let's shift real quick. We ain't going to shift. We're going to shift, but we ain't going to shift. Yes, sir. Because mm, now we go into the parable that he's dealing with. I've never dealt with this before, but God gave me revelation. I promise it messed me up. It messed me up. Luke chapter 8 begins the woman having 10 pieces of silver. Either what woman having 10 pieces of silver... I hear you, God. I hear you. Ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not, does she not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? Let's deal with what she does. She finds one piece. Before we even deal with what she does, let's deal with the silver. The silver is valuable. When you look in the translation, or you look in the Amplified version, what it would say, it said it would say that equivalent to a day's work. When you look at, I just heard God say that when I created man, man was a day of work for me. So it's not just one day of work. You caught that, fair? It's not just one day of work, but it symbolizes the creation that I had of man. But the one piece of silver that was lost was the equivalent of a day of work. He created man in a day. And so it is the equivalent of my creating of who you are. And so it is the value of not only who you are, but what you are. And inside of it lies your worth. It is your value. And the Bible says she lost it. Can I help you? Can I help somebody? Yes, sir. What it's saying is Jesus. she lost part of her worth. Oh my God. Help she me. lost a piece of her value. Yes, sir. But wait a minute. She still got value. She still got value. But she ain't got all of it. It piggybacks right off of the 99. Because I got the majority. But I ain't got it all. I ain't got the fullness of my value. That's why you will recognize who you are in the church, but won't recognize who you are at home. Because I got the most of my value. So I know who I am spiritually. Yes, sir. But if you take me away from the church, I don't recognize. That's why people were driving themselves crazy during COVID. Because who am I outside of the church? Because I can only see me. Right. When I'm in, in front of or behind the pulpit. Because that's the only place they ever taught me, Brandy, how to walk in my purpose. My how to be full of value yes, and power. But then the light comes on and I realize, oh, I'm this dude all the time. Right. I'm this person when I'm walking down the street. I'm this person when I wake up. Yes, See, right. the enemy don't fear me when I'm behind the pulpit. The enemy fears me when I've got breath inside my lungs. Right. Because every time I inhale and exhale, there's purpose in me, but she had lost a part of her value. Mm, my God. Sometimes, but she never left the house. Sometimes you ain't never got to leave the house and lose value. That's true. Mm. People will tell you just stay connected to the house, baby, but you got to keep yourself. Don't right. lose yourself while you are in the house. Right. Don't lose so she never left the house, but she lost her value. Some of you, some of us have been coming to the house for years, and we have continuously, slowly depreciated in value. <laughs> oh, my 
God, lost it at. We don't even know where we lost it at. My God. Probably don't even know where she dropped it at. My God. The first thing that she does mm. is she turns on the light. She turn on the light. <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> if she turns on the light, that means she would got have gotten accustomed to living in darkness. Mm. I ain't gonna play with y'all today. My and a God. lot of times you lose your value My God. because you become too accustomed with playing in the dark. My God. You can become too accustomed with living in the dark. You come into Ooh. too accustomed with seeing in the dark. But she my understood God. the first step to me finding my lost value mm -hmm. is I got to add light to the situation. Ah. Oh, my who can I help you here today? My because God. you will never find your value while you're living in darkness. Right. And a lot of people have been looking for value, my but God. you haven't added light to the situation. God. And God is saying, I cannot give you the full portion or the full weight or the full measure of your value as long as it's dark where you're living at. You got to light a candle first. You got to shine a light first. Where is there darkness in your Because the scripture tells me that darkness can live in light. And so if there's darkness, the only way that there could be darkness is if there's the absence of light. And so I need to shift you into a place where you recognize that you don't need to be looking for your value. You need to be adding light to your situation. My God. Amen. Mm. It is a reality. There's a formula to deliverance. Ooh, my God is messing me up. Watch, watch this. Light is something that makes vision possible. Mm. <laughs> Light, this is the definition. I took it straight out of the dictionary. Light is something that makes vision possible. So if you're looking to establish your vision, you can't do it in a place where darkness exists. You have to shine light first because the light makes vision possible. But, but, but in order to deal with the fact that she's wanting to turn on the light, you have to deal with first that she's dealing with the living in the darkness. Darkness is a gloomy or depressed state. Darkness is a gloomy or depressed state. Darkness is the antonym of light, meaning it is the opposite. Let's deal with gloomy, right? Gloomy is heartbroken. Heart sick. Y'all gonna hate me, then y'all gonna love me all over again, but I got to give y'all the real. Heartbroken, heart sick, heavy hearted, joyless, meaning you ain't got no joy, which is crazy because joy is a fruit of the spirit, but we ain't even here to deal with that Amen. today. Low, low spirited, miserable, Sad, unhappy. Some of us are living like this. Related words. Distress, trouble, uneasy, upset, worried, disappointed, discouraged, disheartened, dispirited. Who? This last one is heavy. Suicidal. Mm -hmm. this, these are the definitions of the word gloomy. Gloomy is a correspondence to darkness. Mm -hmm. So when darkness is around, anytime you see traces of these, mm -hmm. it is an indication that darkness exists. Mm -hmm. Anytime I'm walking around and I've been upset, I've just been upset for the past few days. It is an indicator to me that darkness is there. Anytime I'm being heavy hearted and I'm just walking around and, and being heartbroken that is different with dealing with a situation that breaks your heart. Because mm -hmm. yes, I've dealt with situations that might break my heart, but I ain't going to walk around heartbroken behind it. I'm not going to live in what happened to me. Anytime I'm walking around joyless is an indication that I'm living in darkness. You see what this is the type of place that she lost her value at. She lost her value where she was joyless. She lost her value where she was low spirited, not meaning that she didn't have spirit, but that it was low. She lost her she lost her value in a place where she was miserable, sad and unhappy. She was distressed. She was troubled. Anytime you got a place where you're uneasy, upset, and always worry when you're worried all the time you'll lose your value yes. you'll lose your worth your worth cannot live in worry oh i just heard that in the spirit i'm gonna say that again i'm gonna say that for me your worth cannot live in worry huh 
uh, disappointment. This is why the enemy works overtime to make you disappointed behind things. This is why we're not supposed to have expectations but look for commitment. Because if you don't do what I want you to do, then I get disappointed. But I'm just looking for you to show up. And baby, I'm just glad that you're here. I ain't worried about this. I ain't worried about that. I'm just glad that you're here. Discouraged, disheartened, this spirit is suicidal. Some of us become even spiritually suicidal because we're allowing ourselves to live in darkness. What does that mean, Apostle? That means means that even though you ain't left the church, you killed your purpose. Mm. You self-sabotaged yourself. Oh my God. You took yourself out. My you God. chose spiritual death. Mm. Yes, you're here, but you don't feel nothing. Mm. It ain't that it ain't nothing to be felt, but you have killed yourself. You have desensitized yourself. That is the type of place. That's what darkness is, huh? Or depressed state. I don't even need to define this. So anytime that I'm dealing with depression mm -hmm. or I'm dealing with any of these 20 words almost that deal with gloom, that is an indication to me. You got to become, you better learn how this is why we need emotional intelligence because we need to recognize how feelings shift us into a season. Yes, sir. And it's an indication that there is darkness yes, that is there. And so she recognizes this. She recognizes this in the house, mm -hmm. that there was heaviness in the house, that there was depression in the house. And she said, I got to turn on the light because I can't live like this. And I just told y'all that light is something that makes vision possible, right? Uh, Proverbs 29 and 18. Before I, before I quote the scripture, I'm going to say this. Darkness, we know it in scripture, right? It's Bible. Darkness, can, where there is light, there can be no darkness. Ooh, this was heavy for me. So dark can't live in light, right? Mm -hmm. And darkness is symbolic to depression. And depression is in the definition of darkness. So that means that depression can only live where you have no vision. If light is something that makes way for vision, and depression is something that is attached to darkness, and darkness cannot live in light. That means that anywhere that you have have vision for your life, you can never be depressed there. Mm -hmm. You're only depressed where you have no vision. You're only depressed where you have no vision. I'm going to prove it in scripture. Now we're going to Proverbs 29 and 18. Where there is no vision, mm -hmm. the people perish. Let me, take, let me say this. Anywhere there is no vision, you're going to perish. But let's dissect in this thing. Let me read the message version first. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. If you cannot, if you're in a place and you cannot see what God is doing, watch this. What's that mean? It means that God is still doing it. You just can't see it. Think about what, what God had me say in the beginning yes, behind the testimony. Just because you don't see it, mm -hmm. don't mean that God ain't doing it. Mm -hmm. But anytime you cannot see what God is doing, this is why the woman recognized I lost value. Mm -hmm. But my first thing is to do is not to find it, it's to turn on the light. <laughs> because the first thing I got to recognize my value is going to perish any place I don't have vision. And I don't got vision because there's light. There's no light there. So I need light to give access to vision for me to no longer perish in this place. Because I don't just got to think about the fact that I lost it. I have to deal with why I even lost it in the first place. My God. Thank this you. is why doctors. Thank you, Jesus. If you have a, are dealing with the issue in your heart mm -hmm. that's causing you to, that, that's going to kill you. They won't even deal with that heart condition until they stabilize your life first. Because they have to stabilize you because there's no point of me fixing your heart if you don't die anyway. I'll tell you the truth. I'll tell Lady Dez is back here. When they wanted to give her the defibrillator and the pacemaker in her chest, the doctor said in her bedroom, and he said, let me know now if you ain't going to do what you're supposed to do. Because if you're not going to do what you're supposed to do, you're going to die anyway, and I ain't going to waste my time. 
Because what is the purpose of me doing would have fixed the issue if you're going to kill yourself anyway. Mm. If something is killing you. And so what is the point of looking for value mm -hmm. if your depression is going to put you right back in the same I situation know. anyway? Mm -hmm. So what I first got to do is deal with the depression. Yes, sir. What I first got to do is deal with the worry. Because remember what I said, that worth and worry cannot coexist in the same place. And so you don't need to elevate your worth. You need to deal with the worry first. Because if I fix that, but you keep on allowing this to happen, you're going to end up right back where you started from. So you got to deal with what's causing you to perish because if you can't see what God is doing, because this ain't going to be the first, this hasn't been the first time and it ain't going to be the last time that you have not been able to see what God is doing. So we got to fix your vision. We got to fix your vision. We got to turn the lights on. We got to get you out of darkness first God, because there's there's no point that, that there is nothing in this where God has started or stopped doing what he's doing. The problem is not God doing or not doing anything. The problem is the people can't see. God is unchanging. That means he's always the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So he's continuously doing it, but you can't see it. So I need you to get yourself into focus first. So you need to turn on some lights My in God. your life. Jesus. You need to shift some things in your life. But let's deal with perish. Perish mm. means to die. My God. <laughs> Help me, Lord. It means to stop functioning. It's there, but it's no longer functioning. That deals with your purpose. You got purpose, but you're no longer functioning in it. Mm. To be overwhelmed by emotion. <laughs> I'm talking about where, 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 where there is no vision, they perish. To be overwhelmed by emotion. To end in failure. To become indifferent. I'm talking about the people perish where there is no vision to become indifferent. The word indifferent, oh, I love this. I don't know if this was for y'all or for me. The word indifferent means to lack fire, passion, and energy. Mm -hmm. To lack fire, passion, energy. When I dissected, dissected the word energy, it means activity or activation. Activation is a crucial kingdom terminology. Mm -hmm. Because you can be apostolic, you can be prophetic, evangelistic, you can be pastoral, you can be a teacher, but if you're not activated, mm -hmm. you're just acting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My God. And the people of God in the church, I hear you, Holy Ghost, have 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 traded activation for acting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why we have preacher that, preachers that preach concept, but they don't preach precept. Mm -hmm. mm. Dig deeper, God. Mm -hmm. They teach concept, but not precept. Because they can give you things that sound good, but it ain't word. Mm. It ain't back up with scripture. So instead of us saying things that back up scripture, we just say things and use scripture to back up what we're already thinking. But you can listen to 10 minute, that's why you can hear 10 minute clips and never hear scripture. My God. Yeah. Because it's concept, My God. but it's not precept. When the scripture says line upon line, Precept upon precept. Mm -hmm. And so we're walking around and we're dealing with spiritual vegans. Mm -hmm. Dealing with people that minister meat substitutes. Whoa, it, it looks the same. Have you ever had some good vegan option? Yeah. I had some crispy chicken that looked like almost nothing. I'd have had some stuff that looked like it. I had somebody give me some vegan bacon that was so good, I thought I had the oink oink. I thought they had set me up for failure. I thought I was going to get sick because it tastes just like the real stuff. My wife is a very picky eater. Tasted good to her. And that is exactly what people are doing to us spiritually. They're giving us meat substitute. Ooh, my God. Good. Like Plant based my God. word, yeah. but not meat based. Mm. Cain, Cain, I hear you, Holy Ghost. Cain's word was plant based. Abel was meat-based, mm. so he killed me. Mm. 
Because it made, it's made me look Ooh, bad. Jesus. And we're living in a generation Help me, Lord. where the <laughs> vegans are killing the carnivores. Mm. My God. My God. Because I can't survive with you around. Because in order for me to look good, I ain't even going to call people out by name. That's how people say, how can you do this? Because we remove the meat of the word. Mm. And the Bible tells us by this time you should be teachers. But you still have need of somebody to teach you. And you're living off the milk of the word. And there's a difference between the milk and the meat. There, there's levels to this thing. And we have gotten complacent with preachers that will give us the milk of the word. But ain't giving us no meat. That's it. My God. I hear for those of you that old enough, some of y'all too young. I can hear the woman in the Wendy's commercial that was driving all around saying, where's the beef? Where's the, where's the beef? <laughs> because even Arby's got the slogan that said, we got the meat. We need churches that got the meat. I don't just need milk. Yes. Milk is for babies. But when I grew up, baby, I need some meat yes. of the word. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. <sighs> my God, my God. Thank so we deal with you. actors, but not activation. <laughs> my God. Oh, Jesus. God. Help us, Lord. Once you remove the need mm -hmm. for activation, you end up with actors. That's why you got preachers that don't know how to pastor. Mm. And so the ministry becomes overwhelmed with problems. Mm. Because we ain't dealing with shepherds. Mm. We're dealing with stars. Oh, my God. Hmm. Three C's of activation. <laughs> That's a whole nother message. Three C's of activation. This is how you know if you've been activated or you just act. <laughs> Number one, capability. I took this straight out of the dictionary, so I ain't making this stuff up. Straight out the dictionary. Capability. Capability is skill and ability or knowledge that makes a person able to do a particular job. Capability. I just said we got preachers that are not pastors. And that's why ministries are full of problems and petty folks. Mm. Because they're, they're not capable. They don't got the skill or the ability or the knowledge. They don't even have the knowledge that makes it available, right? Somebody said something to me. It was you. There's a difference between acknowledging and having knowledge of something to be able to do a particular job. So the first step of activation is you have to have the capability to be able to even do the job. Number two, capacity. Capacity is the maximum amount that can be contained. So we walking around asking God for more, but we ain't made room for more. Right. Yes, sir. Bless me indeed, but you ain't made room. That is why Jabez said, enlarge my territory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Enlarge my boundaries. That means increase my capacity. Because there's no point of me praying for more. This is why Jesus said no man pours new wine into old skins. Because, it was, because in the old skins, mm -hmm. it, there's no room for more capacity. They're stiff, won't move, can't stretch, no expansion. But the new skins, when, when more was poured in, they were stretch out. Mm -hmm. They have room to fill up with more capacity. Yes, sir. So God is saying, I want to give you more, but you don't got the capacity for it. If you don't have capacity, then you have not been activated. Yes, sir. Capacity shifts you from office to operation. Yes, sir. There's no point. You can take a title away from me, but it won't steal away my operation. Amen. Yes, sir. You can take the office from me. Nobody has to acknowledge me. I've been, a, for people out there on face, Facebook, on social media, everything, I've been a firm. I didn't just pop up out of nowhere. Amen. But even if you take the office from me, you can't take the operation from me. Mm -hmm. I'm not who I am because I stepped into an office. Right. I am who That's I am right. because people recognize the operation. Yes, sir. Right. Yes. You see what I'm saying? There is a difference. Mm -hmm. 
There is a difference, but capacity is the difference between the two of them. Yes, sir. And people are selling for titles. Mm -hmm. Do I even need to go further? Yes, sir. They're selling for titles because they don't got the capacity, but there's no operation. That's why people still can't tell the difference of why, why, why that's, that's why people were still saying, well, I'm an apostle, but I'm a bishop too, because you don't, you don't have a capacity. Come on, Come on. You don't have the capacity to know that if I got one, I don't need the other. Come on. You don't got the capacity to understand that a bishop is just an elevated pastor. You don't understand that you're trying to walk in two different but that's what we do. And most evangelists, most preachers are only evangelists anyway. And that's why the church can grow, but ain't nobody growing. The church grows, but ain't nobody growing. That's why we can seek ministries, and I'm not knocking them, but I'm just saying that we got to increase our capacity. That's why you can see, like, uh, we had 100 people filled with the Holy Ghost. Another 300 baptized, but they still only got five members. Because they can grow the church, but they can't grow in discipleship. Mm -hmm. And discipleship requires discipline. Mm -hmm. You will never be discipled in the area where you are not disciplined. That's true. It's, the, it's the first that's rule. True. So you have to have the capacity. That's, that's, that's something totally different. This is good. Number three is competency. Mm -hmm. Capac uh, capability, mm -hmm. capacity, and competency. Competency is low. Competency deals with legal authority. That's why you got people chasing titles, but you ain't got the legal authority to walk in. And trust me, if you don't got the legal kingdom authority to walk in an in a, in a office, you better quit false flagging. It will cost you your life. Yes, sir. That's why the demon said, Jesus I know, mm -hmm. and Paul I know, mm -hmm. but who are you? Because you don't got the legal authority to be addressing me. And that is what happens to a lot of people is you trying to cast out demons and demons is looking at folks saying you ain't got the legal authority to even have a conversation with me because I don't even know who you are. Matter of fact, I've talked about this scripture before. The scripture actually breaks down to you don't know who you are. But who are you? If you're walking around, you don't even know who you are. You are the prophet that is trying to be an apostle. You are the pastor that's trying to be an evangelist and an in, in a, in a, in a apostle. You're really an apostle, but the people that tricked you wow. and they're just operating like a pastor. So you don't even know who you are. So who are you to talk to me? You better learn how to talk to yourself first before you address me. Address you before you can address me. So first you got to have competency. You have to be able to operate in legal authority. Yes, sir. Legal. Mm. <laughs> Competency deals with being fit. Mm -hmm. Fit deals with adapted to a design. Mm -hmm. The design deals with the blueprint, the strategy, master plan. When I wrote down master plan in the definition, I heard the master's plan. Mm -hmm. The plan, the purpose. Yeah, here's what Jeremiah said about that, about the blueprint, about the design. Behold, before I formed you in the womb, Jeremiah 1 and 5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart from my holy purpose. Purpose deals with your design. You can't just change that. That's why. You don't become an evangelist for so long and then graduate to a pastor. And then you're a pastor for so long and you graduate to a prophet. And then after so long of being a prophet, you paid your dues and now you graduate and get elevated to apostle. No, you were created for that place in that position. Mm -hmm. So what that means is even in times when I was operating as a pastor, I was an apostle the whole time. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know it. I didn't graduate. I stepped into my purpose. Mm -hmm. Watch this. He says, before I formed you in, your, in the womb, I knew you. Mm 
Before you were born, I set you apart for my holy purpose. The very next, he said, and called you to be a prophet mm -hmm. to the next. He didn't say, but you're going to have to get your ministry license first, and then you're going to have to sit in the church for 10 or 15 years, and after a while, then you'll become an elder in the church, and you'll become a pastor, then you'll become a district elder, then you'll become a, no. He said, I called you to be a prophet. But because we're not competent, of kingdom principles, right. but of church principles, we make people follow a pattern, but not their purpose. Right. We're building people based off a of pattern, but not a purpose, right. because we're not competent. Mm -hmm. And so that's why people are lost, that you know what God has called you to be, but I'm sitting in the ministry that's making me operate like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Jesus. <coughs> that's a whole right nother thing. That's a, that's a whole, we'll be here for two days talking about that. That's why I had to put in the parentheses the master's plan. He said, for I knew the plans that I had concerning you. Yes, sir. Yeah, your pastor came. Oh. <laughs> if I get to talking about fivefold, it's a, it's a whole nother, it's a whole nother thing. We don't have to do a master class on that. Jeremiah 29 and 11 for I know the plans I have for you. Mm -hmm. I know what your mama said, but I know the plans that I have for you, right. declares the Lord. <laughs> plans to prosper you yes, sir. and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. To give you a future mm. and, a, and a hope. Huh. Man, this is I'm going to run out of time. Can I have five, like five more minutes? Mm -hmm. So what God deals with is that for me to activate you, I deal with you based off of my form for you. Right. Form and purpose and plans are all related to words of design. So when he was talking to Jeremiah in these two verses where he was says, I formed you according to my purpose, for I know the plans, he was always pointing him back to the design. Mm -mm. That's good. Your design is made up of how God formed you, how God purposed you, and what he planned for you. How he builds you is based off of his blueprint, his strategy. His purpose for your life. You don't get elevated into that. You're born with it. We ain't getting, we ain't direct. The only thing that we're doing is getting people back to their original intent. Mm -hmm. Getting people sifting through the foolishness mm -hmm. of what everybody else said about you, said to you, and, and, and said regarding you so that you can come forth as what God really created you to be. Because what, that's why one of the biggest problems that you will have to ever be faced with in order to walk in what God has created, created you to be is dealing with every, what everybody else has said about yes. you. Because everybody else got to be, oh, I got plans for you, but if it don't line up with God's plan, if you ain't had a conversation with God, you can't tell me nothing. <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation. Uh, let's get through this real quick, real quick. So the woman, we're going to go back to the woman, right? She turned on the light first. Mm -hmm. I know that was loaded, and there's right. more in that. <laughs> but for the second time, we're going to go on. So she turned on the light first. And it said, and she, and sweep the house. Mm -hmm. Swept the house, right? Sweep means to clear by repeated and forcible action. Mm -hmm. mm. You got to repeat it with force. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Not only do you got to keep oh doing God. it, but you got to do it with power. Hey. You got to do it with force. You got to put, put something behind oh it God. to get something. Have you ever used a broom and can't get something up? And sometimes you got to turn it and you got to scrape away with force to get it up because you're going to get up from here. And it says before she yes. looks for it, she swept. That means she got to use force repeatedly. My Watch God. this. To get rid of dirt. Two things that cannot exist where God has given you value. Oh my God. It's darkness and dirt. Oh. 
Oh, wait, oh, Jesus. And a lot of times we're walking around and we can't find our value mm. because we're too busy dealing with darkness and we're dealing with dirt. My God. Your value can never be recovered mm. in a place that's dark and dirty. My God. Two <laughs> things. I never recognized it and never understood it until God started dealing with me about this verse. Mm -hmm. Would not let me go, would not let me go to sleep. He said she had enough competency about her mm -hmm. that before without even looking for the value, she recognizes this, I hear you, Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. that I don't even need to look for it. If I get rid of the darkness and the dirt, dirt. I'll find it. <laughs> and somebody has been looking yes. for their value. <laughs> Looking for their worth, but I stop by here to tell you that if you get rid of darkness and you get rid of dirt, yes. you'll find the value yes. that God created in your life. That there were some things you've been looking for that you cannot locate. Yes. Baby, it's dark and it's dirty here, and I need you to clean it up. You don't need to move locations; you just need to clean up. Turn on the lights. I know Teddy P told you to turn them off, but I need you to turn them on. And I need you to clean up in here because I'm trying to give you back your value. I'm trying to give you back your worth. I want to give you back your purpose. But you got too much darkness. You got too many dark friends around you. And I ain't talking about skin color, because baby, I'm dark myself. But you got too many people that dibble and dabble in darkness. My you got God. too many people that's dealing with crystals and burning sage My that are around you so you can't find My your God. value. You got too much dirt around you. They try to live in it because they say birds of a feather flock together. And so there's too My much God. dirt and darkness around you that you cannot find your worth. Ah. You can't find yeah. your value. Yes, yeah. Watch this. Thank you. And I'm about to be done. Thank you, Lord. It never God. said she dropped the coin. Mm -mm. It just said she lost it. Mm -hmm. Didn't say where she found it. Mm -hmm. But I believe that she found it on the other side of the darkness and the dirt. Mm -hmm. When she learned how to deal with darkness and dirt, she found oh, the value. Jesus. God is releasing strategies. Yes, he is. Dealing with darkness and dirt. Are. There's a lot that's living in your darkness. Yes, God. Mm -hmm. Yes, God. Yes, You've grown God. comfortable with it. Help me, Lord. Yes, God. You got doctors to deal with your darkness. Mm -hmm. But you ain't been delivered. Jesus. We get medicated, but we don't get delivered. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on. Yes, Lord. We hire other people to deal with our dirt, but we don't know how to mm -hmm. deal with it ourselves. Mm -hmm. My God. Said she swept the house. That's my God. She didn't call the kids in. Mm. Sweep this one. No, she swept. And they don't say she swept the floor. Said she swept the house. <laughs> oh my God. My God. I heard you. She ain't spot clean. My God. I can hear you. She hitting everything. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Another term, and I know it deals with another part of sweep. But there was another definition of sweep that says unwavering victory. Mm. She swept the house. Ooh, she got yeah, victory was, everywhere yeah, in the house. Yeah, you better learn was, how to go in your house and ooh, get victory yes, everywhere yeah. you walk. That's why a lot of us go to bed extra late because we don't want to go to our bedroom because we ain't got victory in the bedroom. Oh we ain't God. got victory at the front door. We ain't got my victory God. in the kitchen. That's why DoorDash and all of that is our favorite friend because we ain't got victory in our kitchen. My I'm talking God. literal, oh, but I'm speaking China. figuratively. Yeah, yeah, there yeah, are yeah. too many places in our house, in my father's house. There are many matches. There are too many places in the house where you don't have victory. You know, that's why some people will live historically sitting in one section of the house in the church because you ain't got victory sitting next to this person or that person. You better learn how to sweep the house because if you learn how to sit next to Deacon Johnson, you might get some victory. You might elevate your value, but because you're trying to avoid situations, you can't can't be elevated from them. Mm -hmm. You better learn how to sweep the house. Sweep the, sweep house. the house. Sweep, sweep the house. I'm coming in and I'm sweeping the house. 
everywhere I walk, there's got to be victory. Because I got to have my value. My value is attached to my victory. And I got to have it. I got to find it. But if there's dark and there's dirt, I can't get it. My God, my God, my God. I can't get it. I got to deal with the dirt. I got to deal with the dirt. When was the last time you really prayed? When was the last time you really consecrated? When was the last time you really got in the face of God? When was the last time? When was the last time? When was the last time? No, you can't find your value because you don't even know what it looks like. Huh? Oh, can I help somebody? Huh? Oh, the very next verse. Let me go. If we done, we done. Uh, it says, and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. That let me know she knew what she was looking for. Yes, sir. No, you can't find your value if you don't even know what you're looking for. <laughs> you get, you ain't got the competency My to locate God. your value. My God. You don't even know what's happening. You don't even know what's going on. My you God. don't know if it came and smacked you in the face. Woo. You wouldn't know. You you think it's discouragement and not your value. No, baby, that's your value. You want to know where your value is? Look at every place the enemy attacks you at. My God. Look at how the enemy attacks you. My God. Always, always attacking you. If he's always attacking your marriage, that there is a value that is assessed to your marriage. My God. God wants to use you there. Is he, if he's always attacking your finances, there is a value. And I ain't talking about the dollar signs. God wants to use you to bless some people. And so he's always attacking your abundance. Remember I told y'all probably about a month ago that if you're dealing with money problems, it ain't a money issue, it's an abundance issue. You're struggling between abundance and scarcity. The enemy ain't attacking your money. He's attacking your abundance because he said, I come that, you, that they may have life and have that more abundantly. Yeah. Now and the him that is able to do it, see it abundantly. Your money ain't under attack. Your abundance is. Yes, sir. But you don't even know what you're looking for. Yes, you can only see yes. that what you have knowledge of. Yes, sir. So if you don't even know what you're looking for, you will never mm -hmm. find it. Yes, sir. It's time for you to get accustomed to and versed with what God has valued with you. She didn't even know that she had lost something. She knew how much she lost. I had 10, I lost one, I got to find it. Can you imagine having 100 sheep and losing one? He looked up, huh, one's off. Something's off, I can walk in my my, my, and, and, and Lady Dez will tell you, I can walk into school and I can say something's off in here. And I start, I go classroom to classroom, I go back because I say something's off. Mm -hmm. Because I can feel it. Mm -hmm. That something ain't right. Mm -hmm. You have to, I don't believe that he was out there counting sheep. Mm -hmm. Something's missing in me. Mm -hmm. It's funny, that's how I said I believe in myself. Mm -hmm. Something's missing. Mm -hmm. I'm missing something. Mm. Let me cut these lights on. Let me sweep the dirt till I find it. Mm. I ain't got time to be counting coins. Ooh, Somebody Jesus. else can worry about my coins and count my coins. Mm. I'm trying to find missing value. Jesus. Let other people deal with the coins. Mm. I'm trying to find mm. my value. Ooh, Jesus. I got to get rid of the darkness. Yes, sir. And get rid of the dirt. Yes, sir. So I can find it. Yes, sir. What do you need to get rid of today? Yes, Lord. What lights do you need to turn on in your life? Yes, Lord. What dirt do you need to forcibly mm -hmm. and repeatedly yes, sir. do mm -hmm. until it's gone? But I've done that. Mm -hmm. Repeat it. Yes, sir. And not just repeat it, but repeat it with force. Yes, sir. Because you're repeating it, but ain't no power. <laughs> oh, my God. And you shall receive power mm -hmm. after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Mm -hmm. You got the Holy Ghost, but you ain't walking in power. There's a difference. That's a whole mm -hmm. nother breakdown for a whole nother day. Yes, sir. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost. We have settled for having the Holy Ghost, but not power. Yes, That's why we're stumbling all over ourselves. Yes, because we don't even have the vision to be able to see what God was really doing. We think we just speak in the tongues, but it's something greater going on. That's a whole nother, whole nother thing. Yes, sir. 
God. What dirt do you need to get rid of? Yes, God. Doing dirt in the spirit. Jesus. Dirty thinking. Mm. Mm. Things that are being done in the dark. Because the new trap is this. Not that what's done in the dark will come to the light. Now the, the, the enemy will allow it to stay dark. Because truth, truth be told, the enemy really don't want to expose because if you get exposed, you might get free. Mm -hmm. If you get exposed, you might escape. Nah, in this next season, he don't want you exposed because you'll get comfortable. You ain't got to worry about exposure because the enemy don't want you to come out. Mm -hmm. So you got to cut on the lights. You got to do it for something. You got to do it for something. Because you can't see the dirt in the dark. Mm. Mm -hmm. My God. Mm. My God. My God. Mm. I need to get rid of the dark just so I can see the dirt. And when I deal with the dirt, then I get my value. Mm. But as long as I'm trying to, I don't want to see this dirt, so I cut up, I put myself in darkness. And somewhere along the lines, I lost my value. Yes, God. Yeah. Today is your day to deal with it. Yes, God. Today is your day to have it. Yes, God. I don't know what that looks like for each one of you because individually we're all different. Yes, God. Our situations are different. Yes, sir. But it's time for the lights to come on. Yes, sir. And only you can do that. God didn't say that I'm going to turn on the light mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. She did it herself. He didn't say that I'm going to find the, 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 one, the one for you. You got to keep looking yourself until you find it. Yes, sir. This one thing I do, forgetting everything behind. You got to search for the one thing that you lost. It's critical to your next season. Mm -hmm. Scratch that. It's critical to your now season. There were some things that God was doing with you now that he cannot do because there are some things that you have forgotten about, some things that you have let go, some things that you have left behind that now God is ordering you to go look for. Yes, God. You're not stuck. You're just looking. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Somebody need to hear that. Yes, Maybe God. it's me. You're not stuck in this season. Yes, God. You're just searching. My God. Searching for the part of you that you lost and don't even know where you lost it and when you lost it. Yes, God. You just know that it's missing. Yes, God. Missing pieces yes, God. of you. It's time to find it today. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We yes, give you all God. the praise, God. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord Father God, for giving us the tenacity and the capacity to be able to find the missing pieces of us. Give us the competency, God, the capability, Lord Father God, to be able to be activated. God, help us to deal with the darkness and the dirt in our life, Lord Father God, that we will come out, Lord Father God, greater, Lord Father God, that we will come out better, God, and not bitter, God, in the name of Jesus. We're tired of walking around the way that we have become used to, Lord Father God. We ain't used to this mess no more. We're not going to settle for less anymore. We're no longer going to live below our privilege, God, anymore in the name of Jesus. But we're coming out. The lights are coming on. We got our brooms out and ready, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Our weapon of choice in this season is a broom, God. And we're going to sweep the house, Lord Father God, until we have victory, God. We're going to sweep the house until it's overwhelming, God. We're going to sweep until our value is located, God. In the name of Jesus, we bless you now, God, in the name of Jesus for being able to find those things that have been lost. Lord Father God, some things that we have given away, God, some things have been stolen, God, but we're going to find those things. We give you praise today. We give you honor, God. We give you glory, God, in the name of Jesus, and we praise you in advance. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We thank God for this.
this word. I thank God for it. Yes, sir. Because it opened up my eyes yes. to some things even concerning myself. Yes, sir. Huh. The revelation that depression cannot live mm -hmm. in light yes, sir. is a real thing to me. Yes, sir. Sometimes I got to just check the switch. Yes, sir. Sometimes I got to just check what I'm living in. Yes, sir. 